We are standing in a Simcoe County forest in a conifer stands in the winter time. And this is a great spot to study winter dendroology. Winter dendroology is a study of trees, shrubs, and vines. And in the winter time, because these are evergreen, they keep their needles. So we can walk in here and look at the 16 species of native and introduced uh, conifer trees we have in the area. We're not going to cover the American larch or tamarack or the introduced European larch, which would give us 18 conifers, because their needles turn golden in the fall and they drop them like deciduous trees. We're going to talk about five species of pine we have in the area. The first one is the red pine here. Very distinctive bark on the red pine, but also very distinctive needles. We have uh, the cones and the needles of red pine here. Notice how the red pine needles are long and sharp, deep, deep covered. And their pine uh, needles are in bundles. They're round needles and using in bundles. This one's in bundles of two. So this is red pine. We also have a couple of other species of pine that have bundles of two. One's the Austrian pine, an introduced species, and the other one is a Scotch pine. You can easily tell a red, the native red pine from Austrian pine and scotch pine by taking the needles and if I bend them and this is a red pine it'll snap the other two will just bend so I'm going to do this and you see how it snapped there and breaks easily apart the other ones would bend so red pine and two species of introduced pine scotch pine and Austrian pine the other species of pine that we have here is the um, eastern white pine. This is an eastern white pine, and it has needles, not in bundles of two, but in bundles of five. So if we pick a bundle off of here, I'll try to get one bundle all together. Here we go. And you can see there's five, W-H-I-T-E. So white pine. White pine also has uh, distinct uh, bark as well, quite different from the red pine. So, eastern white pine, red pine, and the uh, other species of pine is jack pine, a tree to the north that needs for uh, fire to heat to release its seed. More in an open forest, I don't see any jack pine around here, but those are the five species of pine. We also have five species of spruce. Two introduced spruce. Spruce have needles that are triangular shaped, um, like diamonds, sharp edges, and not like pines that have round needles in bundles. These have triangular or diamond shaped needles. If we take a needle off of this one and try to row it between our thumb and fingers, it resists. These two introduced species do that. This is the Colorado spruce, or called the Colorado blue spruce. It has a blue sheen to it. You often see them on lawns in urban areas or in parks or cemeteries. So the Colorado blue spruce and the other spruce that we have um, is the um, Norway spruce. The Norway spruce also doesn't roll very easily. It has drooping boughs. So two species of introduced spruce. The three native uh, species of spruce that we have in our area are white spruce, red spruce, and black spruce. White spruce we have uh, on the upland, black spruce in the wetland forest, and the red spruce uh, in between. Kind of uh, rare. Red spruce and black spruce have hairs on the twigs. White spruce um, are smooth. This is uh, a white spruce. 
Uh, so if we take a white spruce needle and sort of crush it, it smells like almost like cat urine or skunk. Where red spruce, if you take a needle and, and crush it, it smells a lot like lemon fragrance, uh, sort of a lemon freshener. And then the black spruce in the forest uh, has a characteristic smell as well. So those are the spruce. So five species of spruce, uh, two introduced, five species of pine with two introduced, gives us 10 species. The other six species of conifers all have flat needles and look somewhat alike. We're going to walk deeper into the forest to look at those species. So continuing on with our winter dendrology, we've covered about the five spruce and the five pine. Now we're going to do the six that have flat needles. We're looking over a wetland here at eastern white cedar that have flat scaly uh, needles. So we have the eastern white uh, cedar, but in that group we also have red cedars that have flat uh, sharp needles and another shrub, common juniper. So those are the three species that have flat scaly uh, sharp bristles which leads us now to the last three of the 16. And these three all look somewhat similar. So what I've done is I've done a graphic illustration to tell the difference apart of the eastern hemlock, the Canada yew, and the balsam fir. And we're standing in a grove here that has all three of them. We're under this tree here, and this is a hemlock tree. So you can see the hemlock is this, has the smallest needles of, of the three. And we'll just lay that down. And you can see, I'm just going to move that over the bottom of the hemlock. You can see the white lines on the bottom of the needles, two prominent white lines, which is a characteristic of hemlock. Also, the needles are only one centimeter long. And notice how they have a rounded tip. So those tips here are rounded and the white lines underneath for eastern hemlock. Hemlock's a great uh, timber tree to use as sills in barns or in houses where there's a lot of moisture because they're not subject to rot. So right under the hemlock tree, we have another shrub. And this one looks like little hemlocks, but it isn't. It's a Canada U. So I'm just going to turn over the Canada U. Notice it doesn't have the white lines that the hemlock. The needles are longer. They're one and a half centimeters long. And notice how they have at the end a sharp tip, not the rounded tip of a hemlock. So Canada U growing under a hemlock tree. We have one more species in this group, the balsam fir. And back here, we have a balsam fir. Unfortunately, this balsam fir was cut, but um, I'll take a branch and we'll put it up there. Notice it's got longer needles again, two centimeters. And underneath, it also has white, but not as prominent as the hemlock with really strong white lines. They're more greenish white. And it has a rounded tip as well, like the hemlock. The big thing is, if we take a needle from the balsam fir, it has a different attachment than the hemlock. So notice how it's got a rounded disc at the bottom. All furs have a suction cup or rounded disc at the bottom of the needle. And that's characteristic of furs. Whereas if we reach up here and get the hemlock again, and we take a needle from the hemlock, and I'll put it right there. You notice how it's got a little stem on that. So hemlock stem lock. 
it doesn't have the disc, the suction disc, uh, or rounded suction cup of uh, fur, but a little stem for hemlock. This will help you differentiate the free species with flat needles that look somewhat similar. That now covers the 16 species of conifers that you can uh, find. I encourage you to get out in the wetland, start uh, in the winter wonderland, start walking in some of these forests and see if you can identify the 16 species of conifer that keep their needles in this area during the winter.